Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be back here with you again to do another video live feed. I'm doing the live feed today on the subject of the use of the birth control pill in IVF. I've had many requests to do this because a lot of people think that the birth control pill can have deleterious effects when you stimulate people for IVF. And I want to go into this a little bit and help alleviate those concerns because it's simply not true. It's only true if the birth control pill is not used correctly. And that's where we're going to start today. But before I start, let me say that um, if any of you are interested in meeting with me online to have a consultation, all you need to do is contact my assistant, Paddy Converse. You can call her directly at 702-533-2691. You can email her at concierge. C-O-N-C-I-E-R-G-E at sureivf.com and you can also, if you want to, go directly to my website sureivf.com and you can actually book an appointment online from the home page. Please be sure when you, when you fill in the uh, application for the, for the consultation uh, that you include your cell phone number because Patty will need to get hold of you and help you walk through a questionnaire that she's going to send you to, that you need to fill in before we have the consultation. The consultation lasts about an hour and it's followed by a, a, a detailed report that I send you along with supportive materials to read that help better explain and clarify the issues that we discuss. Okay, today the subject is going to be, as I said, use of the birth control pill in IVF. And you know that many doctors, including myself, prefer to launch IVF cycles off the birth control pill and even IUI cycles. There is a lot of um, a rumor out there that if you do that and you use the birth control pill, you will suppress the woman's response to stimulation that follows. And that is not correct. Let me explain to you exactly how you need to use the birth control pill to avoid there being any suppression. And let me tell you why this rumor is floating around there. The rumor is because if, as many doctors do, they put you on the birth control pill and then wait for your period to come. And if, of course, they can shorten or lengthen the time on the pill to make sure that you start your period at exactly the, the right time for their cycles to begin. But uh, they find that when you go on the birth control pill, it either takes very much longer to stimulate, five to seven days longer, for you to get ready to be triggered and have your egg retrieval, or there is discordance, that means irregularity of follicle growth and poor egg quality. This is all true. It does happen, but it happens for a reason. So let me explain. As several months before a woman goes into any particular cycle, her eggs have to go through a process we call a recruitment journey. Remember, a woman's born with all the eggs she's ever going to have, and those eggs are whittled down over time until she starts losing the number of eggs and it falls below a theoretical threshold. When it falls below that theoretical threshold, then she starts going into a phase where ovarian reserve diminishes. We call that diminished ovarian reserve, and it's indicated by rising FSH levels in the beginning of the cycle or declining AMH levels anywhere in the cycle. It doesn't matter when you measure it. But the FSH needs to be measured in the first three or four days of the cycle. When the AMH level goes down, falls below 1.5, 2 is excellent and above is excellent. 1.5 to 2 is kind of in a gray zone. Under 1.5, the woman has got diminished ovarian reserve and needs a very individualized and tailored protocol for stimulation to optimize egg quality. But with this reduction in the egg, uh, uh, in the number of eggs she's got, she has fewer eggs available every month. And this usually starts in women as they get closer to the menopause. It rarely starts in women before the age of 35, but it can if this occurs prematurely that the AMH starts to go down and they get diminished ovarian reserve, but it usually occurs in your 40s. And this diminished reserve simply means fewer eggs are going to go into this recruitment journey every month, which takes several months to complete. Ultimately, the eggs end up in little follicles in the ovaries called antral follicles, 
around four to seven millimeters in size. You can see them clearly at the beginning of the cycle by ultrasound. And you'll know that doctors look at these antral follicles to decide whether or not uh, the woman's going to make enough eggs in that upcoming cycle or to predict how many eggs she's going to produce or and or how to stimulate her. Using the AMH and the antral follicle count, the doctor can hone into the most ideal protocol that he needs to stimulate the woman with. So the antral follicles will respond to stimulation with drugs like Folistin, Gonalef, which contain FSH, and of course Menopure. The FSH will cause the follicles to grow because on the surface of the cells in the follicle, there are what we call receptors for FSH. And FSH is the main component in the fertility drug that is going to cause the woman's follicles to grow. So the FSH receptors are on the surface of the cells that line the follicle. And they respond to stimulation by multiplying. And as they multiply, the fluid in the follicle increases. And the amount of estradiol or estrogen the follicle produces is pumped into the circulation. And we use both those follicle size by ultrasound and the rising estradiol level as a measure of growth. But follicles that these antral follicles must have these receptors for FSH or they will not respond to stimulation when you give the drugs. Now here's the important point. One week or so before the follicles reach the antral follicle stage with FSH receptors ready to go, they are also present in the ovaries and you can see them. By ultrasound, we then call them pre antral follicles to differentiate them from the antral follicles that they become a week later. Those pre antral follicles do not, repeat, do not have FSH receptors that are orientated to respond to stimulation of the drugs. They only develop it in the week that follows, in the week preceding the onset of the cycle when there are antral follicles. And the reason they develop these FSH receptors is really because most women, before they go into a cycle, the FSH levels go up. And this rising FSH, which occurs to set up the next cycle, starts about a week before the follicles, uh, uh, before the period begins. This rising FSH level, which occurs naturally, will cause antral follicles to develop FSH receptors, at which point they are then antral follicles and they can then respond to stimulation. If you try to stimulate a woman who's got no antral follicles but only pre-antral follicles, they will not respond as robustly and as uh, reactively as will be the case if they are already antral follicles with FSH receptors. Now here comes the point. When you put a woman on a birth control pill to lead into a cycle of stimulation, or if you use estradiol to, to prime the, the cycle for a period of time, for a week or longer, it will suppress the production of FSH by the woman's own pituitary gland. By suppressing the FSH in the pituitary, it will prevent the preantral follicles from converting to antral follicles. If, as so many doctors do, you go onto this birth control pill only to get your period started and then begin the stimulation, you begin stimulation with FSH containing products like Folistin, Gonalef, or Menopure. You're beginning it before the follicles have developed their receptors that enable them to respond to the stimulation. So they will not respond, it'll take about five or six days of treatment with the fertility drugs to help convert what will then be preantral follicles to develop into antral follicles, and this will only occur well into the stimulation. Since many doctors, and I'm not one of them, will start doing ultrasound examinations very soon after beginning the stimulation, when they then go to look at the woman's ovaries under ultrasound during stimulation, a few days after the stimulation begins, they won't see the follicles growing, and they'll turn to the woman and say, you know what? you are not responding to stimulation. It could be that the birth control pill has suppressed your stimulation. And in truth, the birth control pill will have suppressed the stimulation 
by preventing the preantral follicles from developing to antral follicles and being able to respond. And this will require a longer period of stimulation and very often the follicles don't grow as well as they should and you end up, end up with discordant follicles and poor results. It's not that, the, that you have prejudiced yourself because there are things you can do on the birth control pill which can promote antral follicle development. All you've got to do is give something that causes the release of FSH from your pituitary and that will then convert the preantral follicles to antrals. So what we do is we put the woman on the birth control pill, we overlap the pill with a drug called a GNRH agonist like Lupron, Superfact, Bucerolin, Decapeptile. These are examples of injectable uh, GNRH agonists. And what this does is expunges, it's almost like if you had a giant sponge in your, waterlogged sponge in your outstretched hand, and you then squeeze it. That would be like the pituitary gland releasing all of its FSH and LH, but mainly here the FSH, in the reservoirs in the pituitary gland, and that will then reach the circulation within a number of hours. That rising FSH, when you give the GNRH, antagon GNRH agonist, to be differentiated from the GnRH antagonist like Cetratide and, uh, and Ganarelix and Orgolutron, they're different. Those are antagonists. These are agonists. And what it does is it squeezes the FSH out of the pituitary, it hits the ovaries and causes the preantral follicles to convert to antral follicles and then you're good to go when the stimulation begins and you're not prejudiced. So overlapping the birth control pill with Lupron for three days and then stopping the birth control pill, continuing the agonist, you will have a period within five or six days. And when your period comes, the preantral follicles will have converted to antral follicles and now they'll respond. So you can see why it is that when doctors give patients birth control pills to launch their cycle, they often tell the patient you may be suppressed by the birth control pill, which is true. But if you use it correctly by overlapping with the agonist before the cycle begins, the antral follicles will be ready to go and you won't have the delay in response and you won't have problems with follicle and egg development. And that is why it's so important that when you use a birth control pill or you put a woman on estrogen priming, you always overlap with the, with the Lupron or the Bucerolin or Superfact or Decapeptile for three days on the pill together and then stop the pill, continue on and you'll have a period with antral follicles ready to go and under those circumstances the birth control pill will not suppress you. So then the question arises why use the birth control pill at all? Why not just start stimulating the woman with Lupron or with whatever protocol you use, starting the Lupron seven days before the period comes and just go on and stimulate? Or why not just start stimulation when the period begins without having used a birth control pill? And here's the reason for that. First of all, it's very convenient for patients to know exactly when they're going to be treated. In my case, using me as an example, I do four batches of cycles every year at prescribed times through the year. So my patients who come to me from 45 different countries with 80% of them coming from out of state and out of country, can plan their lives to be there for a particular cycle which starts at a particular date, which is the same date for everyone, and then the woman's there for a week or two weeks at the longest, depending upon what sort of procedure we're going to do. So for my patients, they need to know, as an example, if my cycle were going to be in, on November the 30th, which is 29th or 30th, which is when my last cycle of this year begins, then the people would know they would arrive there the day before, spend no more than a week or two, depending upon what we do, and then be able to return home. And that's very convenient. It's also convenient for me, because I then know exactly that all my patients will be done over a two-week period when I can devote all the attention I need on only them, and there's no prejudice in doing so, provided you use the birth control pill correctly, as I've just described. So by using these batches, my patients all come into cycle. All we have to do is shorten or lengthen the time on the birth control pill to be able to predict and orchestrate 
that the period comes on the exact date we need it to come so that when they arrive, let's say, on the 29th of November for the cycle that begins on the 30th, we're all ready to go together and it's all done within the latest two weeks and then they can return home. So that's the first reason. Now, obviously, uh, we, by shortening or lengthening the time on the pill, we can make sure everybody has their period at exactly the same time, give or take a day, and so that everybody's in line to be ready for their cycle uh, when they're due to, to, to have it with me. The other reason is that there's a therapeutic benefit. Many women who are on the birth control pill have got higher levels of LH and FSH. And while LH, luteinizing hormone, is necessary for adequate preparation of follicle and follicle growth, too much LH can be deleterious. And by using the birth control pill, you can suppress LH within a matter of days, and this gives the ovaries a breather before you start, so that you end up having a better response, especially beneficial in older women and women who've got slightly diminished ovarian reserve. In the other women, there's no harm done and it makes life very much more convenient. And it still gives the ovaries a breather. Another example of where, the, where it helps a lot to be on the birth control pill, even longer than a month, is with polycystic ovarian syndrome where the LH level is often very raised. In these patients, you want to get the LH level down before the stimulation begins. And that is how you do it, by using a birth control pill for a couple of months before you start giving the injectable fertility drugs for IVF. So this explains why the birth control pill is not harmful if used correctly, and why it can even be beneficial, be helpful for convenience to both the doctor and the patient, and benefit certain patients by using it with no downside for those that don't have diminished reserve or are not older or are younger. So that's the story about the birth control pill. If you go to my blog and you go to the search bar on top of the home page, you can type in use of the birth control pill in IVF. It'll bring up an article that I've written on the subject to help explain it to you better. I hope you found this beneficial and that it clears up a lot of the uh, confusion that you often hear and explains why it's not a good idea to put someone on a birth control pill, just wait for the period and then start the stimulation. Because if you do that, you don't have antral follicles ready to go. The cycle will take longer to stimulate. The doctor will think you're not responding, but it's simply because antral follicle production has been suppressed. And you don't want to do it that way. You want to do it the way I've described. I hope you find that helpful once again. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them during an online discussion when we formulate and develop an individualized protocol for ovarian stimulation, and that's very important. There's nothing more important than tailoring the individual protocol that the patient receives to her individual needs based on her profile. And all this is what we really go through in detail during our consultation. You have a wonderful day and stay safe, and thank you for attending this live feed.